Hey, this is Eric Arnold. It is Monday afternoon, the 9th of August here in the Sports Barn. And we've got one free MLB pick for you here today. This is our Monday recap episode, if you will. On Mondays, we recap our records and uh, kind of uh, take a look backwards a little bit on where we've been for the season. Um, I've been sick. That's why they've gotten no videos the last couple days. I'm just coming out of it now. I'm still fatigued. I've been sleeping like 16 hours a day. And uh, I don't know, lost six pounds. Uh, was it the boogeyman flu? Who knows? Who knows? Somebody said, why don't you get tested? What the fuck for? You know, why? <laughs> so they could do what with me? Um, you know, it's getting better. I think we'll be I think we'll be right most by by tomorrow. At any rate, uh, let's let's pull our records up here. Um, guest handicapper Pittsburgh Louie, in case you're new, he makes comment or uh, picks in the comment section of the videos pretty much every day. Uh, he's got just about as many picks as I have. Clearly above 500. He's hitting around 55% of his picks. He's about what 30, 20, 30 units to the good. Um, I don't have my notes in front of me. Going by memory. So he's kicking ass. Then there's my record. Uh, I had a really good week, and then that was curtailed by my illness, unfortunately. I'm riding an eight game winning streak, if you can believe that. Eight game winning streak. I'm upwards of 14 uh, units to the good. So uh, both of us are doing well. You know, we, the barn is hot in more ways than one. It's uh, definitely warm out here today. But um, not embarrassed with what we've done so far this season, not at all. Winning, we've done it, doing it. Continue, well, I want to continue to do it. So let's see. I mean, uh, you know, the season's a marathon, that's for sure. Speaking of which, did you see Kipchoge? Did you see Kipchoge? I know you didn't because no one's watching the Olympics. Nobody gives a shit. I made a specific point to watch the marathon because I've run six marathons and I wanted to see this. And I know you're saying, what? You did what? Yes, I've run six marathons. I have witnesses. That's true. So I wanted to see Kipchoge. And he's the best. I mean, is he the best marathoner ever? Hard to say. I mean, I'm always a uh, partial to Emil Zatopek. That's my guy. But uh, Kipchoge has got to be in there. Uh, they go out. Everybody's in the pack there. It's hot as hell. I mean, 78 degrees, 86% humidity. If you know anything about running, that is horrific conditions for a long distance race. That is, that is the baton death march of running weather. That is, you're, you're going to have people dropping out, falling over, and they did. Well, Kipchoge gets out about, no, oh, I don't know, 15, 16 miles, and the group's still all together. The American Galen Rupp, he decided he was, his strategy was going to be, I'm staying behind Kipchoge, damn it, until, I can't be behind Kipchoge. So he is stapled to this guy's back. <laughs> Just stapled to his back for about 15 miles. Just uh, 90 minutes. He's just right there, right there, right there. And finally, about mile 16. I don't know if he got tired or frustrated with Rupp shadowing him. I think it was just time to go. I don't think it had anything to do with Rupp's strategy. I think it was just, okay, it's go time. He, he turns around and he started doing this to Rupp. You know, he's motioning at him and he said something to him, which I imagine in Kenyan might have been something along the lines of, okay, you ready now? Now it's time we go to school. And boom, he just took off. It just... He, he did the next 5K in 14 minutes and 28 seconds. Uh, if you're a runner, you know that's just unbelievable. That is so fast. That is so unbelievably fast. 
He did that in the middle of a marathon. Unbelievable. So after he did that, no more Galen Rupp, no more anybody. He just dusted those guys. Gone. Yeah, and then, you know, at the end, he's running by himself. He's all alone. No one there. He was uh, about, what, uh, 90 seconds ahead of the nearest uh, runner behind him. So pleasure watching the great Kipchoge work. He got the gold for Kenya. And uh, I enjoyed that. Back to baseball. Well, I, like I said, the haves and the have-nots now. It looks like the trade deadline is definitely separated. Uh, I got my Phillies jersey on as they swept the Mets this weekend. So it's going to come down to the Mets, or not the Mets. They're out of it, I think. The Braves, the Braves and the Phillies. I think the Mets just have too many injuries. When's the Grom coming back, subscriber F? I mean, where is this guy, the great the Grom? Uh, Baez, he looks like he's significantly hurt. Uh, he left Sunday's game with some kind of hip injury where he just looked like Roberto Duran. No moss, no moss. And uh, so you won't see him again. Uh, Lindor, he's out. Well, I don't know when he comes back. So uh, they just, it's a mass unit up there in New York. I, they just can't get onto the field. They're good players. So I think that's going to just do them in. Phillies Braves, I like the Braves there probably as much as, you know, let's be realistic. But we'll root for the Phillies. I, they're working on me. The Phillies are working on me. I do not like this team. But they keep winning. So, you know, winning, yeah, come on, they're trying to get me on the bandwagon. I think it's a trick. You know, they're going to, you know, wait till I jump on and then boom, you know three-game losing streak. So the Reds, they're playing well. Can they catch the Padres? Can they catch the Brewers? Ooh, going to be tough. I mean, I think they have a better chance of catching the Padres than the Brewers. Uh, I think the Padres are going to come back to them. So the Reds could make the playoffs. I think that is possible. The Giants, I, what do you say about this team? I looked at that schedule the, or the uh, standings the other day, and I, I was I kind of had it in my mind that the Giants and the Dodgers were like right there. You know, the Giants are four games up. They're four games up. That's significant at this point. You know, the Dodgers have some work to do, and, and you know they've made so many crazy moves, and they have all this talent now. So you just expect that they're going to get it done. But I don't know. It's getting late early here. Um, the Giants will not go away. This is uh, getting, getting. I think it'd be the funniest thing ever if the Dodgers got knocked out of this whole thing early. You know, if they got in that one game of death and lost <laughs> after trading for all these superstars and that, uh, signing all these superstars in free agency, and that's all they could do, that'd be funny. I'd enjoy that a lot. Um, American League. Uh, it looks like the Rays are starting to pull away. Uh, the Yankees are playing better, but will it be enough to catch the Rays? The Red Sox have hit a bad stretch. Um, White Sox are clean. They're, they're gone. They're out of there. They're in. And uh, then, you know, the Astros look like they're pretty clean. Um, the A's lost one of their best players to cheating. He swears he didn't cheat. Laser. Uh, Loriano, Ramon Loriano from uh, the uh, Athletics. He's their center fielder, 80-game uh, suspension. You know, they, they, it, I wish these guys would just own it. Don't lie. It's like you cheated, and then you lie about it. You suck. You are scum, buddy. Just scum. I have no idea how that got into my body. Ah! Jesus. Yeah. Have you heard that one before? I think that's what Ryan Braun said. I think that's what well, all of them have said. So, you know, 80 games, he's one of the better players. So that's got to hurt them. Uh, so I'm thinking the Astros and the White Sox are both gone. They're pretty much in. And then it's going to be a free-for-all in the East. So, so what, what are we looking to play here? Well, today I... I glanced at the red game, and uh, I just, I like the Indians, but I don't like their pitcher, so I passed on that. Um, 
we're going to take the White Sox. I think the White Sox is a good play today. Um, they smashed the hell out of the Cubs. The White Sox are... They're feeling good. They're got, they're, they've got depth. They're getting people back, if that, you can believe that. You know, Jimenez, one of their better outfielders, he's missed the whole season. He's now back in the lineup. I know he had at least a couple big hits in Chicago this weekend. They've got... Now they don't have just one lights out closer. They've got two lights out closers, Hendricks and Kimbrell. So this is just a really deep, good team. Uh, the Twins won three out of four in Houston over the weekend. Should we be afraid of that? No, no, I'm going to say no, not at all. My, the way I'm reading that is Houston's had a couple, more than a couple, instances this year where they just take a take a weekend off at home just you know or a, a three-game set at home and they just take it off they got swept by the Orioles earlier in the year at home so I think that's just Houston doing that you know, just basically doing that just uh, yeah you know let's just coast here you know we're we're clean we're in there's no worries here we're gonna play half-ass baseball, we don't care. <clears throat> and the Twins were the happy beneficiary. So I don't think the Twins are that good. Don't think the Twins are suddenly somebody we need to pay attention to. The Twins have been dead money all year long. I don't think that's changing. So White Sox, good deep team, will lay the number uh, at Minnesota. And uh, Giolito did not pitch well last time out. I expect him to bounce and pitch well tonight. I think he will. Uh, the Twins are pitching some guy that, uh, I guess he's, I looked this up, because I've never heard of the guy, Bo Burrows. First round pick of the Tigers, who they gave up on this year. You know, he's one of those, if you're lucky enough to root for a team, then this never happens to. It happens to the Phillies all the time. They pick first round guys. We expect them to do something. And then half the time, more than half the time, three quarters of the time, they never do. And you're just waiting and waiting and waiting for the guy to get somebody out. And he never does. So the Tigers finally gave up on the guy this year. The Twins picked him up. And I guess figuring, well, why not? He's free. Uh, well, maybe we can turn garbage into gold. Maybe. Or maybe it's just garbage. So. Uh, he hasn't pitched well. He hasn't pitched well his whole career. Uh, he's one of his, you know, first or second or third starts of his life tonight against the uh, best team or second best team in the American League. Good luck with that. Uh, I think the White Sox are going to hit him all over the place. So uh, this certainly feels like a, a game for the White Sox here, and we'll lay the big number at Minnesota. There you have that. Um, football is coming up. I don't know how we're going to approach it yet. We are going to do football. Um, yeah, we're probably, probably a smart thing to do would be, you know, we're going to have football. We're not going to pick every damn game. Um, we'll try to pick enough games to keep you interested. We'll try to keep baseball alive since we're winning at baseball you know i want to keep doing what we're doing well uh, but i know everybody's interested in football so you know i know three uh, probably 80 percent of you could give a shit about baseball but um so we're trying going to try to once again try to be all things to all people very good hit the like button all that good stuff and we'll see you tomorrow eric arnold signing off